What parts of Bierce's setting and an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge are real, and what parts are illusion? In this lesson, you will learn how to draw inferences from a text by analyzing the setting. Let's review. You have read An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge at least once. This is a short story written by Ambrose Bierce that takes place in the American South during the Civil War. The main character, Peyton Farquhar, has been caught trying to blow up a railroad bridge in support of the Southern cause and is about to be hanged for this crime. The story tricks us into thinking that Farquhar's escape is real, but the ending reveals that the escape was an illusion and that Farquhar was really killed by the hanging. Here are the steps we will use to make inferences from the setting in this story. First, we will reread portions of the text and highlight key words and phrases that describe the setting. Next, we will use a t-chart to sort the descriptions of the setting based on patterns that we notice. And finally, we will ask ourselves, what inferences can we draw after analyzing the setting of the text? So let's go ahead and do that first step. And in order to reread portions of the text, the portion that we're going to look at right now is from the very beginning of the story, section one, and paragraph one that you see highlighted here. And again, as I read, I want to think about what words and phrases describe the time and or the place for the action of this story. And those are the words and phrases that I want to uh, highlight in my text. So in this first paragraph, those words and phrases include the railroad bridge in northern Alabama, the swift water 20 feet below, the stout cross timber that is above the man's head, and the two private soldiers of the Federal Army. I included the private soldiers of the Federal Army because together with the description of northern Alabama, this lets me know that this story takes place during the American Civil War. So again, let's look at another description of the setting from a little later in the story. And specifically, we're going to take a closer look at section three, paragraph three. And you see that highlighted here on your screen. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm asking myself what words and phrases in this section describe the time and or the place for the action of the story. Now this is the part of the story where Farquhar is escaping down the stream after the rope broke during his hanging. And so this is the setting that he notices during that escape. So here are the things that he sees and that are described in this setting. Um, the individual trees, the leaves and the veining of each leaf, the prismatic colors on the dewdrops upon a million blades of grass. He also hears the audible music of those insects, those dragonfly wings, the water spiders. He also hears the rush of a fish's body as it parts the water. So when I think about the setting details um, I, that I highlighted, I realize that there is a pattern or connection that might be uh, uh, coming up. And it's in the contrast that the author draws between reality and illusion. So I'm going to use a T-chart. And basically a T-chart is just a two-column chart that is helpful when we want to put things into categories. So using this T-chart, we are going to sort the descriptions of the setting into two groups and those groups are um, things that are realistic or real and things that maybe are not so realistic. They seem like illusion. So what seems real to me? Well, the railroad bridge seemed real. Also, northern Alabama, that swift water that was 20 feet below him, the stout cross timber above his head, and those soldiers from the Federal Army. All of these descriptions seem realistic to me. These are the kinds of things that a newspaper story might report. This is what I might actually see with my own eyes if I were at this scene. But what didn't seem very realistic? Well, those individual trees just didn't seem realistic to me, nor did the veining of each leaf on those trees. I don't think that a man who is trying to escape with his life is going to notice those things during his escape in the setting around him. 
I also don't think it's realistic that he notices the prismatic colors on those dewdrops on a million blades of grass. I also don't think that he would have time to notice the audible music of those insects or the rush of that fish's body as it parts the water. These things don't seem very realistic to me, and again, as someone who is escaping with his life, I just don't think he'll notice those things. So now that we have thought about the setting and how those details work together, we need to ask ourselves, what inferences can we draw after analyzing the setting of the text? Well, when we looked at that first section of the text that we analyzed, we are able to infer some things from these descriptions that seemed realistic. First of all, we can infer that yes, the descriptions did seem realistic and that it's almost similar to a newspaper story, like it's reporting facts. This is really happening. This is an inference that I can draw from this text and that this is the part of the story that is reliable. When we look at the inferences that we can draw from the next part of the text that we analyzed, we come up with some different inferences. Here, we realize that these descriptions seem unrealistic. They're almost similar to a dream. This is not really happening. And the big inference that I draw here is that this part of the story is not reliable. It's unreliable, and it just can't be believed. Now we can go back and answer our initial question. What parts of Bierce's setting and an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge are real, and what parts are illusion? By analyzing the setting, I can infer that the description of the railroad bridge being readied for a hanging is real, while the description of what Peyton Farquhar sees as he escapes is not real. One reason I believe that the setting of the hanging is real is the use of the words Alabama and federal soldiers. This helps me to understand that the story takes place during the very real event, the American Civil War. One reason I believe that the setting of the escape is an illusion is that Beer said Farquhar noticed things like individual trees and the veining on each leaf. A man who is fighting to save his life would not have time to notice these things. Knowing that some parts of the setting are real and others are not supports the idea that Farquhar's escape was not real, but that his death was. So how did we get to this part of the lesson? First of all, we reread portions of the text and highlighted keywords and phrases that describe the setting. Next, we used a t-chart to sort descriptions of the setting based on patterns we noticed. And finally, we asked ourselves, what inferences can we draw after analyzing the setting of the text? In this lesson, you have learned how to draw inferences from a text by analyzing the setting.